Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, today we will consider the third problem um, in the general topic of uh, equations. Um, it's not any specific to linear equations or quadratic equations. This is still about invariant and non-invariant transformations. Um, so the first two problems were um, a little simpler. Um, the first one was actually uh, uh, dedicated to only invariant transformations, which is the simplest case. Um, in the second problem, we have introduced certain uh, non-invariant uh, transformations, which will, um, in theory, um, uh, introduce some extra solutions. So we have to make uh, a checking at the same at the end. Um, uh, just to make sure that we didn't really gain any new solutions. The dangerous part is the one which is um, uh, today's topic. It's when transformation might lose certain solutions. Um, it's more dangerous than, um, than the previous case when we gain some solutions, which are not real solutions, um, because checking doesn't really help much. If you lose a solution, let's say equation had two different solutions, you lost one during the transformations, and you still have the second one. So the checking will be fine, no problem, because it is a solution, but you lost one. And that's what is the real danger, and you have to be very, very careful when you're making transformations um, not to lose solutions. And these three examples which I have right now are exactly um, about this particular topic. So, let's consider the first, which is x squared minus 16 equals to 0. Okay, how can we solve this equation? Well, very simply. The first transformation is obviously plus 16, and that results in x squared equals to 16. The second transformation is square root. Now, that's where the danger comes. Square root is not an invariant transformation. Um, primarily because, as I was saying before, two different numbers, positive and negative, being squared will result in the same, um, in the same number. So there is no reverse transformation. There is no one-to-one -one correspondence. And uh, usually when we are using the square root, in algebra we mean the positive value of square root. So the square root of 16, we actually uh, uh, mean 4, not minus 4. But if you look carefully, if x is equal to 4, if you just square root both sides using just a plain algebraic uh, square root function, you will get that. And that's the solution. And obviously you have lost another solution, which is x equals to minus 4. So, the point which I wanted to make is when you are extracting the square root from uh, some number, especially the number which contains um, an un unknown variable, you really have to understand and you have to make sure that you consider all the cases. You might lose the negative part. So, whenever you are extracting a square root from both sides of the equation, you really have to write two different equations. Namely, um, you have to divide actually your domain, this is your domain, where x is defined in two pieces, for positive or zero x and for negative x. And therefore, you have to put for the positive x, you have to put x is equal to 4, or x greater than or equal to 0. And for negative x, you have to put, for negative x, equals to 4. Or rather, we'll do it this way. That's easier. So we have split our domain in two pieces and basically 
solve our equation separately in one piece versus another. So whenever you're extracting square root, this is always a necessary uh, procedure, otherwise you might lose uh, one of the solutions. In this case, solution x is equal to minus 4. And again, why? Because square root is not an, an, invari not an invariant transformation. Okay. So whenever you are dealing with a square root, you always have to deal with positive and negative sides of it. Let's go to the next equation. A little more complex. x squared minus 16 divided by x plus 4 squared equals to 0. OK. Now, what transformation uh, should be applied in this particular case? Well, obvious choice is, well, let's just multiply both sides by x plus 4 square. Just to get rid of this on the left, and 0 will give 0 anyway. And so what we have as a result, we will have x squared minus 16 on the left equal to 0 on the right. Well, is it right? Well, not exactly. Why? Because um, this transformation of multiplication by something is not always invariant. As you understand, um, multiplication uh, by some number is invariant only if that number is not equal to zero, right? Which means that we really have to consider separately a case when we are multiplying by zero. Now, when is this particular um, expression um, is equal to zero? Well, it's equal to zero when x plus 4 square equals to zero, or x plus 4 is equal to zero, or x is equal to minus 4. So this is a separate case. Now, let's go back to this equation which we got after the transformation. As before stated, we had two different solutions, x equals 4 and x equals to minus 4. Because both of them, being squared, will give 16. But, again, we can do this only if x is not equal to minus 4, because then this particular multiplier becomes 0. And, obviously, in this particular case, if x, if, if x is equal to minus 4, you have a denominator equal to 0 which is definitely the bad thing. So x minus 4 cannot be actually the solution of this problem. You have to very, very carefully consider cases when you have something in the denominator, and you just multiply by that denominator without thinking about what's the consequences of this. Now, the consequence of this is that something which is not really a solution, x minus 4 cannot be a solution because it's in the denominator here becomes a solution all of a sudden when you get rid of this denominator. So that's one more point to consider. Whenever you have something in the denominator, immediately the first thing we should do is to restrict your um, values of uh, unknown to those when denominator is not equal to zero. Because the domain of this function is definitely this, x not equals to minus 4. Therefore, solutions, which should belong to the domain of this function, obviously, should be restricted as well. This is not a solution. Okay. Got away with the second example. Let's go to the third one. Okay x squared minus 1 times x minus 3 plus x plus 1 equals to 0. Well, um, for those who like to do it straight and multiply, you will get the equation of the third degree, the third power, x to the third power, you see. Um, now, the equations of power of 3 are not easily solvable. Although, um, some time ago, 
um, a mathematician with the name Cardano, I think, Italian mathematician. He really um, deduced a, a general formula for the roots of the equation of the power of three. But we're not talking about this. The formula is, is that, that big, so we don't really need that. Well, um, what can we say about solving this particular equation? Well, it's basically quite easily. Let's do it this way. This x squared minus 1 is obviously represented, can be represented x as x minus 1 times x plus 1. Well, indeed, actually, a squared minus b squared is always a minus b times a plus b. Because if you will multiply this, a times a will be a squared, a times b will be plus a b, minus b times a will be minus b a, and minus b times b will be minus b squared. And this is reduced, so you have a squared minus b squared. So, this formula is very easy, and it should be actually remembered by heart, quite frankly. It's a very convenient one. So, using this formula, with a is x and b is 1, I can represent it this way. So, next, let's continue. I have x minus 3 plus, and let me put x plus 1 in parentheses for a better visibility. Now, look at this. Now, you remember there is a distributive law of multiplication um, uh, relative to addition, which means we can actually have x plus 1 outside of the parentheses. And in the parentheses, I will have what's left, x minus 1 and x minus 3 in this case. And in this case, it's plus 1 equals to 0, right? So far, I did not do any transformations, invariant or non-invariant. I'm just changing the formula on the left, changing this particular expression to get this. OK, now we can do the transformation. What's the transformation? Divide by x plus 1. You see, both sides can be divided by x plus 1. If you divide the left part by x plus 1, you will get rid of this one. And the 0 divided by x plus 1 will give 0, right? So without thinking much, we can write this equation, right? Wrong. What's wrong about this picture? The wrong about this picture is that when we divided by x plus 1, we actually uh, made a, a non-invariant transformation. Division by something is invariant only if that something is not equal to zero. So again, we have to specifically consider the case when x plus 1 is equal to zero. So x is equal to minus 1. Now, specifically considering this case, we can see the following. If you will put x equals to minus 1 to this equation, or this, or this, or this, doesn't really matter because they're all equivalent. Obviously, you will have this equal to 0. Doesn't matter what the value of this guy is, because the multiplied by 0, it will be 0. So x minus 1 is a solution, which we lost when we have transformed this equation into this. So if we forget about x is equal to minus 1, we basically lost the solution, because this one has completely different solutions. So x minus 1 is one solution, which we have lost if we just trans which we would have lost if we didn't really pay attention to this. But since we are smart, we did pay attention that x plus 1 should not equal to 0 to make this transformation invariant. And x is equal to minus 1 is a separate case, which we have to basically consider separately. Again, it's like if we will uh, split our domain where this formula is defined, we split it in two pieces, not equal obviously pieces. One is x equals to minus 1, and then all other x's. 
So x is equal to minus 1 is a separate case, and it is a solution. We have found one solution. Now, considering x is not equal to minus 1, now we can reduce it by x plus 1. We can transform divided by x plus 1, getting this one. And now, let's solve this equation. Well, let's just open all the parentheses, and we'll see that this is x squared minus x and minus 3x is minus 4x plus 3 and plus 1 is equal to 0, which is x squared minus 4x plus 4 is equal to 0, and this is x plus 2 squared is equal to 0. Okay, x plus 2 squared is equal to x squared minus 4x plus 4. We can check that. Now, the next transformation we can apply is square root. Okay, if we apply the square root, we again have to be very careful. In this case, however, it's easier because on the right we have 0. So plus 0 or minus 0, it doesn't really matter, it's still 0. So the solution to this is x plus 2 equals to 0. So x is equal to minus 2. That's the second solution. So there are two different solutions to these equations. Minus 1, which we would have lost if we did not pay attention to the fact that we are dividing by something which contains an, an, an unknown variable x and the minus 2, which is the result of the equation which is left after the transformation. Well, I just wanted to make sure that certain um, dangerous parts of um, invariant and non-invariant transformations are covered. This is still an introduction to equations in general. And again, my point was, yes, transformations can be applied but if you are applying a, a non-invariant transformation, which is not multiplication by two or or doing some some or, or adding two or whatever, some very trivial transformation. So for all other transformations, you really have to be very very careful. There are no um, how should I say it um, like one recipe which 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 fits all the situations. You just have to understand that every action which you do, every transformation which you make with an equation, in case it's non-invariant, and most of the transformations are actually non-invariant, um, you just, you know, have to be careful. When you divide by something, make sure you divide by not equal to zero, or consider um, this uh, member being equal to zero as a special case. Same thing when you multiply it. If you um, apply the square root, for instance, again, consider positive and negative parts. There are many different special cases, and these are only a couple which I, I wanted to cover in the introduction. Uh, there might be more. Well, obviously, because there are more functions. There are exponential functions, logarithmic functions, trigonometric functions. Every function has its specifics. And that's why you have to be very careful when you're applying any kind of a transformation to equation. You should not lose solutions. You should not gain solutions. If you feel that this transformation might gain something, obviously checking at the very end would help. If you feel that something might lose the solution, if some transformation, then you just have to separate this case and consider it completely individually what happens if that particular thing is equal to zero or something. Well, that's it for today. Thank you very much. Good luck.